Teresa, like, what are your... What are, yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. Elia, Elia and I are at Bad Camp 2014 and it's super cool. Are you having a good time? Yes. How absolutely. many of these have you been to before? Uh, camps? This is actually my first camp. Yeah. Wow. And, and DrupalCon Austin was my first DrupalCon. Welcome to the Drupal community. Thank you. What is your job at Four Kitchens in Austin? Um, I'm the operations manager at Four Kitchens. Uh, I've been there for 13 months, so pretty new still on the scene. What's your day-to-day -day job? What do you do? Um, I do a lot of things. Uh, basically, you know, I manage the office. I do a lot of HR stuff, um, some marketing and events things, and um, just daily operations. You know, all the behind-the-scenes stuff that make the place run smoothly. Yesterday, we were talking about how you read an older blog post of mine called 10 Tips for Success as a Remote Employee, something like that. Yeah. Um, and how that uh, was interesting, and then we sort of fell into comparing notes. Totally. Part of your job is making sure that Four Kitchen succeeds in a transition from being an organization that was all in one place mm -hmm. through growth and having, its uh, and having now a number of remote employees. What do you have to do as a manager with these teams to to make sure that your remote employees succeed and contribute um, and are part of your company culture as well. Yeah, um, I mean when I started we had one remote employee and that was Matt. Um, he was in California and then the rest of us, the 16 of us, were in Austin and we've grown to 23 uh, since then and we have six remote employees um, based, you know, all sorts of places from West Coast, Central, um, I don't think any, oh wait, we have one in the East Coast time, and then one in Germany also, which I know you're familiar with. And um, I think that part of what I have to do is just um, evaluate tools and make sure that we're using the best tools available for our remote communication to make sure that communication is easy, accessible, and uh, good quality. Um, so like when we're comparing like video conferencing tools, like which one allows all of us to have our own line which one has the best video quality so that we can actually see the expressions that we're making on the other end. Uh, because when you lose those things, you lose so much in communication. Oh. So, so you, at Four Kitchens, you actually define some policies about the tool sets yeah. that everyone should use? Yeah, exactly. Um, one that we've been using, uh, started using recently, is called Zoom, and it's a video conferencing tool. Um, one thing that I really like about it is that we can all have our own personal Zoom line, you know, so we just have a link, uh, you know, a fancy, like, URL link that's like fourkitchens.com backslash, you know, whatever. And I can be like, hey, let's chat for five minutes. Here's my link. And they click on it, and it opens up the Zoom. And so it's just, like, instantaneous. It doesn't have to be this thing where I'm like, oh, let me go invite you to a hangout, da-da-da. I just invite them to a call and we can be speaking in, you know, 10 seconds. So when you came to ki Four Kitchens uh, just over a year ago, mm -hmm. was that your first encounter with open source software? Um, yes, most, like, I knew what open source was just from being, like, a, you know, 10-year-old nerd with a laptop um, and growing up in, in the ages that we have, um, but... As far as uh, my first job with like an open source company and really being like embedded in the culture, um, that was the first thing. It really excited me though, just because I that's sort of what I've been living my whole life is this open source idea of share, you know, share, 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 yes. learn from other people, and so it kind of just made sense. Wow. So, what advantages do you see a company like Four Kitchens having because they work? the open source way with open source tools in, in, and um, with all of this, you know, use, share, modify, all of these freedoms. I think that the advantage is that we know that there are things that we're not doing perfectly and there are some things that we're doing really great and we're okay with that. 
um, we are constantly finding out more from other teams like who have distribution. We're constantly saying, oh, you're distributed too? Like, let's compare notes. Like, let's talk about what that's like. Because every conversation, you learn something new that you can bring back and say, hey, I heard about this thing that we should maybe try out. And another thing that I find with open source um, is that we're willing to make mistakes. It's OK. Because of the way that most of our teams run, we're willing to iterate. And so when something maybe doesn't go well, like we're like, oh, that, that particular tool just wasn't that great. We don't beat ourselves up about it because we're, we're going to find something better. So the lessons and the practices in the code side of open source bubble up through Absolutely. the entire culture. So, so don't know how to solve a problem? Ask the guy from the competing company because actually we're all in this together. We're, we're all working all on Drupal together. together, so we might as well compete better, right? Exactly. We don't have to compete on, on, on the perfect, um, you know, I don't know what's a good example, but having what coffee machine's better, like that's not a secret, right? Right. Just like our code is not a secret. Exactly. So let's let's run better teams, let's make better pitches. That's cool, that's a neat thing, um, um, certainly about the Drupal culture. Yeah. It's beyond frenemies, it's you have really genuine friends and genuine collaborators who yeah. then you meet pitching for projects. You win one, you lose one, but that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I, you know, I've asked people, um, like, why do they love Drupal? You know, why do they keep coming back to using Drupal? And most people say it's because of the community. And I, that's certainly why I love Drupal. I love that it's a software that we get to make such exciting work with and that's changing people's lives every day, that's really impacting the users. And it's so user, you know, centered. That's all it's about. Like, who's this end user? And we have to put ourselves into that mindset and say, what do they need? That's a big thing. But off the top of your head, for managers and, and, and people who are hiring remote employees, what are you, like your top three or four tips up that you as a manager have to do to succeed um, and, and help those, those people succeed? Right. Um, I think uh, not in any specific order, but um, Remembering that it's, a, it's about empowering people. Um, you know, hiring a remote employee, a remote teammate, uh, is not just about um, getting the best, right? Because that's often what people say, like, oh, well, we, we hire remotely because we get the best people and we don't have to make them move. But it's also about empowering that person to work their day the way that they want to and work from where they want to live. Um, I know that, like, with our team, we have sort of this, like, motto idea of like when one person is remote we're all remote and I know that Taylor talked about that a little bit just um, like when we have video conference we all take it from our own laptop so we can each see each other's faces there's not like a conference room where we're all looking at the one right, and there's a crappy microphone yeah. and somebody's off and then the present oh I forgot to send the slides but I'll do it afterwards and I'm gonna write this on the whiteboard but, but remote, you can't see so, that. yeah and we did we did that for a while but we learned from that so we try to do things differently um, Let's see, so that's one thing. That's sort of equal, equal rights and technologies. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that making sure that you connect with people on a human level, like not just about work, but making sure that you like say, hey, mm. let's chat for 15 minutes about your life. Oh, so make time for the social side that, that would come more naturally in, in the same physical space. Yeah, absolutely. That's really, that's really insightful, sure. And then um, one thing that we've started using is like we all have uh, you know headsets with mics, and we all felt kind of ridiculous at first when we started this sort of like rule of you have to have a headset. Um, but it has changed the ease of communication because I'm not sitting there on a call like, what are you saying? I can't tell. It's so clear. It's oh, it so sense. everybody has to use good quality gear. Yeah, you have to use good gear. I love the um, example from from one of your teams where they just when they wake up they fire up an audio channel and even if it's just a lot of typing noise for twenty minutes and like somebody tells a joke and somebody yeah. you know asks a question and it's really uh, it, I, I imagine it'd be really spontaneous um, and and close to the the good parts of being physically co located. Absolutely, yeah. And then I I think um, you know one thing that's really important for me um, at running our team is um, knowing what everybody's doing, knowing that people are available or unavailable and knowing when that is and when I can expect them because 
in the office, it's so easy to go over and tap somebody on the shoulder and say like, hey, I know, are you busy right now? Um, but if you're sitting in California and I'm sitting in Austin and I don't know where you are and I need something from you, then it helps if I can go and be like, oh, well, Matt's having lunch or, oh, Matt's, you know, at the doctor. Oh, um, so how do you do the status update? Uh... So in HipChat, there's like a three different statuses that you can list, you know, available, away, and do not disturb. And so what we do is when we turn those things on, we actually say like available, working from home, or because most of us in the Austin office also work from home a lot, um, or unavailable on a call. And so I can easily go in there and be like, oh, well, where is Taylor? Oh, he's on a call. Okay, I'll come back and, and check on him in a little bit. So it sounds like you've defined a lot of best practices, figured out a lot of things that work for you. How do you get new employees up to speed on this culture? Do you have a do you have a um, orientation guide? Do you have a list of? Yeah, we we do. Um, when I send out their orientation email, you know, sort of like, hey, hello, welcome. Here's this huge, long absorbable list. <laughs> yeah. There's a pop quiz tomorrow. <laughs> Let's talk about this if you have questions. But it just lists out like all of the tools we use and sort of like, here's this tool. Here's why we use it. Here's some best practices of how to use it questions, you know, and so it's not super in-depth, it's not like this giant manual, but just sort of a quick blurb on every tool that I've like sent them an invite for at the end of the day, you know. Would you be willing to share that? <laughs> the, the list of our tools? Yeah, Absolutely. Like yeah. Would you be willing to share that orientation guide with us? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Wow, okay, this is going to be a super post. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, I'm really, really excited about, about all this. People still use that. Um, well, we stopped working together because they started hating me. What? <laughs> About that. I know, I'm just kidding.